Well, here we are again, folks. So proud to be with you this morning. And I'm telling you, this is the second part of Paul's epistle to the Philippians. That I'm, gonna, I'm just talking, I'm and not reading the book straight down through. I'm talking about what he had to say, who he was talking to. He was talking to a young church. He was talking to a group of people that said they wanted to follow Christ. So they started believing. They believed in God. They started following what Paul said. And Paul said to them, to forsake the flesh or forsake the desires of this world and take the desires of God into your heart. And how do you do that? You say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. You say, hey, is it that simple, Brother Peter? Yes, it is. It is that simple. You take a little track that says right in it, it says uh, uh, how to ask Jesus is, is to forgive you. You say, I, am I a sinner? Have you ever sinned? Have you ever asked Jesus to forgive you of sin? If you've never asked him, you're still a sinner. So you say, what do you do then? Well, what do you do is you say, well, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart. Save me. You say, is it that simple, Brother Peter? Well, yeah, for God, it's that simple. For you and I, it wouldn't be. We've got to go through an act of Congress to sharpen a pencil. But God, it, it's, not, it's nothing to God. Listen, I, I feed a few, a handful of birds out here. God feeds all the birds in the world. <laughs> hey, is there anything too hard for God? It's not too hard for him to save you and uh, cleanse you, make a different person to you. You haven't got to be around anybody else, just you and God. And then you can get your Bible down and you can say, Lord, now that I've asked you to save me, would you reveal this book to me? Take it, open it up. You, well, you don't know anything about it. And uh, look in the front cover. And right in the second page there, it has all of the books, 66 of them listed. Will you look into the last, down at the bottom of those, it will be over in the book called the New Testament, which is the last part of the Bible. The New Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ and it's the story of how Jesus came walked on the earth and his little three year period that he was uh, here on the earth walking on the earth and then he left a group of disciples uh, 12 of them and they were supposed to apostolize uh, the rest of the world with their lives while they were here in order to do that they had to act like they were followers of Jesus Christ which is called a Christian. That's Christ-like. What is a Christian? A Christian one is Christ-like. This is what Paul said. The mind of a Christian adjusts his mental attitude and his attitude toward the world and says the things of the world is not what I need anymore. What I need now are the higher things. The things uh, that are high that uh, exalt God and what we need to do the higher things of a man in a Christian man is to exalt the Father in heaven this is what the Father in heaven wants and he wants worship he wants fellowship he wants you and I to get in a quiet place and fellowship with him one on one God chose different people through different times and do you say, uh, could a God that created the heaven and the earth be lonely? I'm telling you what. After you get saved and you get to following the Lord and you get out and you start hunting for somebody to sit down and just be a friend, talk with you about the Bible, talk with you about God, just come and sit with you and talk about the Lord. Crack open the Bible and say, hey, look at this revelation the Lord showed me. And they say, look at this one the Lord showed me. And all that. That's hard to find. You can't hardly find that. You can't hardly find it anywhere today in this world. But that's what God is looking for. You know, when he had Moses on that mountain 40 days and nights, I wonder, this is what I wonder, I wonder, did he have Moses up there for 40 days and nights because he was he had a lonely spot in, in the God being that he is, and he had this little spot right here that he wanted to fill with a man with a person and he sat and talked with Moses and communed with Moses 
just like he did with Adam when Adam was in the Garden of Eden? Why do you think God came down in the early part of the day every day and talked with Adam and talked with Eve? Why did he do that? He did it because he made man so he could commune with him. And then he left this system for you and I, which is called prayer, which we can commune with God. There is a mode that you need to get in when you're praying. And that mode is to say, I'm not going to just recognize you, God, but I'm going to pay attention that you are listening to me. I'm not just blowing words in the wind. I'm praying to you, my Heavenly Father. And you say that you have a window of heaven, open and affectional window. I like it where Jacob saw the ladder. Uh, open and in heaven and the angels ascending and descending. Uh, do you know uh, that was a vision that says there? But you know how Jacob got that vision? He got close enough to the Lord so he saw the windows of heaven open. Stephen got close enough to the Lord so he said he looked up and he saw heaven open and he saw the Son of God standing at the right hand of the Father. And you know what Stephen said? Stephen said, I'm ready to come. And he said, lay not this charge, Lord, to these people that are stoning me to death. He said, lay not this to them, but forgive them. And he uh, gave up the ghost and went on to heaven. Now, are we living close enough to the Lord so we see the window of heaven open so that we can get that vision I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say, my friend, that I myself find myself not in that position all the time. A good bit of the time, I try to be in that position where that I know my communion with the Lord is not broken, but is open. Love. Love, it talks about. Uh, Paul saying to the Philippians here, Love abounds more and more. He's saying to Philippine children, now that you're a group, now that you're a church, now that you're meeting around in houses and you're doing things and you're together, now that you're a group, be careful. Be careful to love each other. Be careful not to throw stones. What do you mean, Brother Peter, not to throw stones? I carry a stone right here. I have it in my pocket. This stone I carry for a reminder. Uh, this is a stone I tell people I cannot throw. If I throw this stone, I'm going to have to break the windows in my own house first. Uh, I may see something, and I'm going to make a quick judgment with my mind and my eyes. And if I'm not careful, that judgment's going to come out of this mouth, and it may be wrong. Be careful before you judge something. Be careful what you see and how you make a judgment. Because that judgment will come home to haunt you. Because you may be on the other end of the stick next thing you know it. A man goes by and uh, passes by you in a car and makes some kind of rude gesture. Or waves a gun out the window at you. Or does something. Are you going to make a quick snap judgment? Or are you going to say... I take my stone and say, Lord, I believe that man could use you. I believe that man could be could be saved. I believe that man needs you, Lord. Uh, could you say that? Or do you say all manner of other things about that person that did that? Uh, listen, a sinner is a sinner. And you don't need to be throwing stones at a sinner. You need to be throwing a word at that sinner and to that sinner. Words like, Hey, fella, here's one of my tracks. If you'll read this and do what it says, you can get saved. And if I don't know that man, and I hadn't seen that man before, and I may never see him again, I can say, Lord, help me to pass by his path again. And the Lord's done that time after time after time. Cross his path again, where I can say something to him properly about the Lord Jesus Christ. My question today, get the book of Philippians down, read it. Read where Paul's talking to the apostles. Our time has come and gone, and we'll see you next time. 
Uh, this is Brother Peter again with tidbits from the